It's like we're going to make our country great again. Donald Trump hammering Kamala Under Harris Kamala, on the economy while holding a rally in Battleground, Michigan. Hello, everyone. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. What's going on? Hey. And I'm still Judge Jeanine Pirro, along with Jessica Tarloff, Jesse Waters, Dana Perino, and Danson Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. No more hiding for the most radical left-wing ticket in history. Vice President Kamala Harris and her running mate, Tim Walz, sitting down this afternoon for a taped CNN interview. At long last, she finally answered for why she's flip-flopped on so many issues. Watch this. How should voters look at some of the changes that you've made, uh, that you've explained some of here uh, in your policy? Should they feel comfortable and confident that what you're saying now is going to be your policy moving forward. The most important and most significant aspect of my policy perspective and decisions is my values have not changed. You mentioned the Green New Deal. I have always believed, and I have worked on it, that the climate crisis is real, that it is an urgent matter to which we should apply metrics that include holding ourselves to deadlines around time. We did that with the Inflation Reduction Act and what we need to do to secure our border. That value has not changed. Donald Trump mocking Kamala for bringing her emotional support running mate to the interview. Here's what he told the Daily Mail. She's doing it with her vice president sitting there, so she's not very smart. When they ask her a question that she can't answer, she'll just look at him. You answer it. He's sitting with her to help her out. So this is not the kind of a person we need as president. All right, Jesse, I'm going to start with you. It seems that her answer to her flip-flopping is going to be, my values haven't changed. But does that explain her positions in 2019 when she was running for president and all of the things she did as vice president? They had 30 days to come up with an answer, and they came up with that. <laughs> this is going to be a great campaign. I've never been more confident than I am now that Trump's going to win this election. This Jesus. is a great example of why she'll never be president. The first question, why are you a flip-flopper? And she says, I'm not. She's basically saying, I'm not a flip-flopper. Values have changed? Okay. Values you said, have changed. not. You say, okay, you say in 20 changed. years, okay. you said in 20 years, you can't get a new car that's a gas power car. And now you say, no, actually, that's not true at all. And then in her answer, she says, yeah, we're going to have deadlines. Yep. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. And when you listen to her, it's just all like kind of vague gobbledygook. Like it just washes over you. Like, what is, what is she talking about? She doesn't really like bring you in. Okay, so your values haven't changed, all right? When you were a prosecutor, you said you prosecuted people for crossing the border. And then when you were running for president, you said crossing the border isn't a crime. And when you were the border czar, you were literally flying people across the border. And now you want to build a wall? But your values haven't changed. Yeah. <laughs> None of that makes any sense. And Stephen Miller was on the show last night, and he said... They basically nominated someone, a Democrat, who's afraid to go on a CNN interview. You can walk around D.C. and just bump into people dying to do a CNN hit. But they found the one person afraid to do CNN. And now you know why she's afraid. Because she knows she's not up to the job. She doesn't want the job. She doesn't understand the issues. She doesn't know where she stands on the issues. And she's like John Kerry. Remember the John Kerry? I voted for it before I was against it. Same thing with her. She's just not authentic. And that politically is the killer. You know, Dana, John Kerry, when he said, I voted for it before I was against it, he starts to give you an explanation. Mm -hmm. She doesn't explain anything. The yeah. fact that she's co-sponsored the bill that says, we want a mandate that you have to get an EV car and, and all the things with the Inflation Reduction Act, the impact on inflation. How do you see it's this so working? I hadn't thought about that John Kerry thing for a moment. There's a guy named Joe Pounder, and he worked in the, um, he was on the campaign, I think it was on the Bush campaign, and he was just watching his job as a junior bird man was to sit there and watch town halls that John Kerry was doing. It wasn't like he did this and did an interview where you're going to make some news. He just happened to say in a town hall, yeah, I voted for it before I voted against it. 
oh, and he was like, oh, wait, that could be something. And that's what turned the whole campaign around. So wow. moments like this is when the campaign gets harder. So she's had a really great 40 days. And I think that CNN, I would imagine, gave the best clip for the, pro the promo, right? So we get that at 4 o'clock. I mean, I don't imagine that they have a lot of uh, more great material that they're going to hold on to to try to get everybody to watch at 9 o'clock. Maybe they do, but uh, I kind of doubt it. Um, she has a multiple choice question, and she still doesn't answer that. Then she has to get into the world, word salad of the how do you diagram the sentence of basically in, measures in time, right? Mm -hmm. she, she goes back to that. That is, is her go-to. Um, it literally means nothing. Plus, she says, my values have not changed. Well, if that's the case, then why in practice did everything change? Mm -hmm. In practice, you, you, like, and, and your values are that you wanted to prosecute criminals. In practice, the Biden administration let all these people come across, and they're not putting any pressure on the DAs across the country in order to hold anybody to account. The last thing I would say is, in the interview, she basically admits that the Inflation Reduction Act was a backdoor to get the Green New Deal done. Mm -hmm. And what did the Green New Deal do? It goosed all the prices, put all this money into the economy, which helped fuel inflation, which is why the Inflation Reduction Act is a problem. Um, it's really easy to Monday morning quarterback, whatever today is, Thursday morning quarterback, um, a communications decision. But if you have to agonize this much to do one interview so that it becomes like the State of the Union address and we're yeah. all like waiting on pins and needles and they're going to send out excerpts beforehand, I do think you have a problem. The other thing is, you know, tonight is the opening night of college football. Who's going to watch? Well, you know, right, Jessica, Jessica? Uh, what Dana is saying is true. Like, in practice, um, she not only allowed that border to open up, but she was responsible for uh, getting millions to the Minnesota bail fund. So she can say, my, my values have changed, but everything that she has done affirmatively, whether it's the Inflation Reduction Act or allowing the border to stay open and, you know, uh, with fracking and saying all these things, everything is contrary to what she now wants us to believe. And by the way, if she's breaking the glass ceiling and she's really close because she's a vice president now, why does she need the crutch? Why does she need walls there when it's her inconsistencies that we care about, not his? Well, on other days during the week, you seem to care a lot about Walls' inconsistencies. So well, I don't think when that's we're really talking fair. about Walls, oh. not when I'm talking about Kamala. Well, that is the but ticket. But now we're talking and about Kamala. Seeing, and you're seeing the ticket in full. I, I think it's important to watch the entire interview before we totally malign her for not answering this properly or not touching that. I think the answer was actually reflective of a lot of conversations that we've been having here on The Five about just owning up to an evolution in it. And you can still say, my values are the same, especially when you're talking about an issue like health care or protecting the climate, but also being realistic about what you can get enacted. I mean, you can't just walk in and pass whatever you want. You have to work with people. You have to work across the aisle. They did their best at doing that. Um, so I, I think people are just going to have to watch it and decide for themselves. But I will say that, you know, watching a little bit of Trump today, listening to his allies, J.D. Vance was out there being booed by a bunch of firefighters yeah, earlier this afternoon. A round of applause. Slash half the audience hated no, him. No, no, it was in but Boston. But anyway, the attacks. It was in what, Boston. What That's a de deep Democrat city. And he got overwhelmingly brave, brave a round man. of applause. J.D. Vance, I think his approval is like negative 17. Anyway, the point is <laughs> that the attacks on Kamala, that she's not very smart, she's not a smart person, Trump is saying that, that she's a DEI hire, are not landing. It just isn't working. And I, I don't know, Jesse, if you stayed around to watch Brett Baer, the top of his show, but he had all the polls, right, where they're showing the direct opposite of what you said. So, so glad you brought that I up. I am glad you brought that because up, I myself. Because happen, I happen to bring something. Okay, this well, is did you Nate bring Silver. our poll? No, this is Nate Silver. It's an Let's, amalgamation of all no, the polls. No, I, I know who and Nate that, Silver is. Good, so I don't need to remind you. I'll just tell the audience he's their go-to guy on the left for what? polls. 52% chance Trump wins. Okay. Okay. What is and what's Kamala saying, just now saying, in his forecast? I, just I think it's four to or five stumble points. Upon this, I so in bring our it to own polls, Kamala hits fifty percent in Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. She's down one in North Carolina. You know, no, no. This it, is important because this is actually the measure of where the race is. What we're talking about doesn't matter as much as how people are going to what vote. What the Democratic measure of the race is, is, is what happens on election day right now. Right. And I'm telling you, if the election is, was held today, right. okay, that but, Kamala, not, but look, I asked a question that was not that, and let me go to you, Greg, at this point. She, they're saying, you know, that, uh, you know, she's more than a DEI hire. She's this brilliant person. Have you ever heard Kamala Harris give a serious interview 
Well, I was uh, touched by something no one brought up. Uh, she says that they held themselves to deadlines around time. Yeah, because there's nothing I hate more than deadlines that are untethered to time. You know, a deadline that is not connected to time, it's not a deadline. <laughs> They call it a deadline because it is attached to time. There was no joy there. That's what I noticed. Yeah. I mean, I, I found that she looked miserable. I think there was a lot of anxiety emanating from her. I think that's because of, like you said, all the pressure that has been placed on her. An 18-minute interview divided by two because it was Waltz, nine minutes. He subtracted it's questions. Crazy. It's left five minutes. That's enough room for maybe one of Kamala's sentences, right? Talk about a controlled burn. You know, they, they had to localize this sucker. But then, you know, we, we haven't touched on Waltz, and I think he had a really tough role because he had to know his place. He had to be there when necessary, but not steal the spotlight. We call it the reverse Jesse at Fox, <laughs> you know, who intrudes when not needed and hogs the stage. The thing is, though, the key for Waltz, he, he couldn't help her. You can't mansplain. Dana, do you know what mansplaining is? <laughs> so it's, it's when a man, okay, explains something, uh, typically to a woman such as yourself, in a manner that's kind of regarded as condescending or patronizing. It's like talking down to a woman, something I would never do to you, little lady. <laughs> uh, unless, you're unless you're confused about complicated things like math or economics. But I would never do that to you. There's only one way that Harris can win, and it has nothing to do with her. It's the media's responsibility to sustain the same amount of ecstatic coverage they created the last month for 68 more days. And they can do it. I mean, they lied, about, they lied about Biden for, what, three and a half years with no fatigue. But if this elevated artificial joy dips... She's dust. They can't let reality intrude. It's like one of those marathon dance contests. The media's got to keep their dance partner propped up all the way until the November 5th, or the charity loses. <laughs> Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.